Uh -oh, oh, trouble. trouble. Steve Park is off into the infield. Another car ball over on his lid. It's Park and Dale Jr. Terrible crash. Man, Steve Park's car just turned dead left, and he came off turn two. Junior's running to see his teammate and see if he's okay. And getting off into that wet grass wasn't going to do anything to slow those cars down. Washington is out. Mickey Rudd will leave the field back to the yellow. You can see Park moving inside the car, looking through the back glass. He's trying to get himself unwrapped around the roll bars to get out. Yeah, he's definitely moving in there. That's a great sign. Earlier, Benny, Steve coming yeah, out of there. There he is. There we go. Good sign. That's what we wanted to see. Anyways, it, what happens is you slide up the racetrack, and you can hit somebody in their left rear as you slide up the racetrack with your right front. And that's almost what it looked like, that one car just turned dead sideways. Well, what a great shot that is. Teammates walking away from a crash like that arm in arm. Steve Park is undoubtedly one of the unluckiest drivers in all of NASCAR history. But you're probably asking yourself, Darian, what is he doing on your NASCAR bus series? Well, let's get into it. Steve Park would make a name for himself in the NASCAR Federlite Modified Series. He would win several races and became a championship contender before moving on to the NASCAR Bush Series. He would receive a phone call from the man himself, Dale Earnhardt, in 1996 to drive his Bush car. Initially, he didn't answer the phone at first, thinking some friends had pranked him. He left a message on my answer machine, and uh, I just uh, kind of erased it. Thought it was friends of mine kidding around. There was a message like, uh, how come you don't call me back? I'm called you twice now, you know? And I said, oh my god, that's Dale Earnhardt. When I first moved down here, I actually lived at Dale's house. Well, I couldn't sleep the first couple nights because I'd lay in bed and I'm thinking, well, I'm in the Intimidator's house, and uh, he's just like right upstairs, and I was just kind of petrified about that a little bit. He would make one Bush Series start in 1996, but in 1997, it was Park's first full-time season in the Bush Series, driving the number three AC Delco Chevrolet. His 1997 stats are this, three wins, 12 top fives, 20 top tens, a pole, an average finish of 11th place, and would finish third in the standings. After an impressive first season in the NASCAR Bush Series, Dell Sr. moved Steve Park immediately up to the NASCAR Winston Cup Series for 1998. Unfortunately, in his first season with the team, he would miss a bunch of his rookie season after this crash. My rookie year, punctured a tire, sent the car hard into the wall. I ended up with a broken leg, fractured clavicle, just numerous injuries. He is out of the car, on the stretcher, he is conscious, and they are going to load him into the ambulance. Despite coming back from this injury later in the season, he would score zero top tens in his first season with DEI. In 1999, there would be a crew chief change to Paul Andrews in the middle of the season. And he would score five top fives and finish 14th in the standings with an average finish of 20.6. But 2000 would be Steve Park's breakout year in the Winston Cup Series. And there we are on the final lap. Just a half mile away for Steve Park, who is now 20th in NASCAR Winston Cup points. Only has one top five finish this year, fourth place in Atlanta. But now... He has a win in the Winston Open, and he is advancing to the Winston. It's going to become a longer work night for the Pennzoil team. Steve Park is headed toward his first NASCAR Winston Cup victory, but let's not give it to him yet. Mark Martin, we saw the last couple laps. He has some good power in that number six car. He might be able to get in the inner loop a little bit harder than Park. Can he? Doesn't look like it. Can you imagine what's going through Steve Park's mind right now? He has a good entry and exit from the inner loop. Mark Martin remains a couple of car lengths behind. He's got this long sweeper here. Turn nine, a straightaway, and two more, and then the checkered flag. 
Well, both of those drivers just absolutely driving their heart out. I'm telling you, want to get it, everything they possibly have in their body, trying to get to a victory lane. Through turn number 10. One more to go. And Steve Park is going to do it. Steve Park is going to win the Global Crossing at the Glen, his first NASCAR Winston Cup victory in his 77th race. His 2000 Winston Cup stats are this. One win, six top fives, 13 top tens, two poles, an average finish of 17.1, and would finish 11th in the standings. Heading into the 2001 season, Steve Park was looked at as one of the up-and-coming stars in the Winston Cup Series. Unfortunately, the season would start off with tragedy. His boss, Dale Sr., would pass away in a crash in the 2001 Daytona 500. Literally the next week, Steve Park would carry the DEI team on his back, scoring a win the week after his boss's death. Deciding to race Rockingham, um, we gotta do what he would want us to do and go out and win races. The last five laps, I started thinking, we're in a position to win this race. I was um, emotionally falling apart in the car. Here we go. And then finally, a voice came over my shoulder and said, suck it up, boy. Get it done. Go win this damn race. One lap to go. This is it. This would be Steve Park's second and final career Winston Cup Series win, but nobody knew this at the time. Steve Park was showing his full potential on display in 2001. Through the first 24 races of the season, his stats were this. One win, five top fives, 12 top tens, an average finish of 16.5, and was sitting 10th in the standings. Park was well on his way to scoring his first top 10 points finish in the Winston Cup Series, but the next week in a Bush Series race at Darlington, he would be involved and injured in a total freak accident. Cars for a yellow. Watch the top of your screen. You're going to see the purple car come into the picture. There's Foyt trying to get his way up to the front of the pack. Oh, oh Park got hit. Oh, man. We're Who's the yellow car behind Park? Bad timing. Is that Dan Partis? Looks like no, no, he Park just, just spun. He just he just lost it. Either something obviously had to break on that car, or or something for the car to turn left that hard. He didn't just lose it at that speed. Oh, that's crazy. It's almost like an axle was broke or something for the car to turn like that. Oh man. yeah, you see the skid mark right there, and you see the safety workers there working with he and Larry Foyt. So Steve Park's steering wheel came off, causing him to yank a hard left. And right at the same time, Larry Foyt was speeding up to join the lap down lane when he completely T-boned the driver's side door. Steve Park would suffer a brain injury and several broken ribs. Steve Park would miss the rest of the 2001 season because of these injuries. You could say this was the beginning of the end for Steve Park's career, to no fault of his own by the way. He would return to the Winston Cup Series after missing the first four races of the 2002 season. Steve Park would never be the same again. First car to get out of shape and spin, here's Steve Park, the one, Terry Labonte, the five car, Rick Mast, the 90 car. Pickles, corn flakes, and Pennzoil. That's not a good combination. No, they got mayonnaise in there too, so yeah. it's... You got corn flakes, motor oil, and mayonnaise. Right here, Jimmy Spencer in the 41, Brett Bodine in 11. Right here, he, Jimmy had to check up because yeah. of Mark Martin Mark in the Martin. six. Brett Bodine gets into his left rear quarter panel. They that checked broke, up a little bit, yeah. Rusty spins, and then this is what happens. Yeah, that broke uh, Rusty's momentum. I'd write down the cars involved, but there aren't many that weren't. That might be an easier task. 
uh, onboard view from. And Steve Park is spinning up in turns three and four. Got another one spinning. Is that Nadeau? Jerry Nadeau behind him. Caution is out. Two cars, separate spins. Uh, well, Todd well, Bodine there. Todd Bodine. I thought maybe he had to back off the throttle because of Todd Bodine, but that replay did not show that. Oh, he scrubbed off a lot of speed and still hit hard. Every NASCAR Winston Cup season, there's one poor soul who finds himself the target of silly season scrutiny, the subject of every internet rumor and closed door conversation. In 2003, that man was Steve Park. Since returning to Dale Earnhardt Incorporated from injuries suffered in late 2001, Steve Park's performance has been anything but peak. Coming into California, the 35-year-old New York native was 27th in points, looking to justify his employment with DEI. For one lap on Friday, he was back on top. But he Jones could be on the close, though, guys. Oh, he he yes. got it. He does it. How about that? Five, three, six, three, one thousandths of a second. The stage was set for Park to flex a little Pennzoil muscle. But during lap one on Sunday, the man with something to prove pushed a little too hard. Park spins. And a rapid fire chain of events set silly season 2003 into real motion. On the Monday following Richmond, Jeff Green was released from Richard Childress Racing after nearly two seasons. On Tuesday, Steve Park was released from Dale Earnhardt Incorporated after six and a half years. By Wednesday afternoon, each driver had taken over the other's former ride. I feel like that running man on the side of the AOL machine, and uh, it's just been a real whirlwind couple of days, and uh, you know, to, to uh, lead the Penzoil team and then uh, have that door kind of closed behind you. Um, the door opened up, thankfully, at RCR. So his 2002 stats are this. Zero wins, zero top fives, two top tens, and an average finish of 26.5. In 2003, he only had one top five, three top tens, two poles, and an average finish of 26.7. Steve Park's Winston Cup Series career was officially over. He would end up moving down to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, taking over Brendan Gaughan's old ride. In his first season with the team, he would score 10 top 10s and finish 9th in the standings. But the comeback would finally be complete after scoring his first and only career Truck Series win in 2005 at Fontana. So basically, Steve Park's career was derailed by injuries. Had these injuries not happened, I'm well convinced he could have won Rookie of the Year and also could have gotten his first top 10 finish and probably would have gone on to become a consistent top 10 driver in the Winston Cup Series. So pretty much I have to put Steve Park on this list and I was kind of tempted not to, but Steve Park did not live up to the high expectations set for him, but it wasn't due to performance at all. It was because of injuries. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.